Uh, Stephen McIntyre is the host of Climate Audit, which is a blog. Uh, I guess some of you have heard of Climate Audit. It's devoted to the analysis and discussion of climate data. He has worked for 30 years in the hard rock mineral exploration industry as an officer or director of several public mining exploration companies. He has served as a policy analyst for the Canadian government and for Ontario. He's best known for his investigation of the validity of the hockey stick graph used to, very famously in a journal article by Michael Mann. That's right, wave your sticks if you've got them. Um, this article, uh, the hockey stick, of course, then appeared in uh, IPCC reports, including the most recent IPCC reports. Um, Steve's repeated requests for data from the Climatic Research Unit at the University of East Anglia led to the incident that has come to be called ClimateGate. Steve represents several things, I think, that are best about science, uh, independence, skepticism, and persistence. The fact that he is not an academic has infuriated his critics <laughs> and delights us. I think when future historians write the story about the great global warming delusion and how it ended, I think Steve McIntyre is going to have a very prominent place in that book. We are very lucky to have Steve with us tonight to give us an update on what's going on with the climate gate controversy. Please welcome Steve McIntyre. Thank you for the warm reception. I, uh, this is by far the largest audience that I've ever spoke to, so I, um, and I don't come from, a, as uh, Joe said, I don't come from a small town in the United States. I actually come from a large city in Canada. And uh, Toronto, I think, is probably south of the small town that Joe comes from. <laughs> as all of you realize, I have a pretty unique perspective on climate gate. And while many important issues are, um, just a moment. How do, okay. um, while many important issues are raised by the emails, what I'm going to do today is follow the most notorious email, the trick to hide the decline, and try to put that in context right from its origin in the 1998 reconstructions of Briffa and Mann through the third assessment report and on to the um, Jones's equally notorious request to delete all emails, then on to ClimateGate and the half-hearted inquiries. A few caveats. The trick itself, the obstruction of FOI requests, the whitewash inquiries, and the seemingly obtuse reaction of the climate science community inevitably places this community in a bad light for audiences like this. Nonetheless, keep in mind that nothing that I say tonight proves or disproves global warming, nor does climate science as a whole stand or fall on proxy reconstructions. If we knew nothing about tree rings, we would still be obliged to assess the impact of doubled CO2. As a final preamble, there is far too much angriness, in my opinion, on both sides of the debate. People are far too quick to yell fraud at the other side. And I don't think such language is, I think such language is both self-indulgent and counterproductive. I don't apply these labels myself. I don't permit them at climate audit and don't believe they serve any purpose. That doesn't mean you can't criticize authors. I do so all the time and will do so tonight. But any point you make should be able to be done on the facts rather than adjectives. The trick email had its roots in the 1998 Mann and Briffa temperature reconstructions. Both were submitted 
independently in 1997, actually within a few days of one another. Both drew on very large tree ring networks, but their later 20th century results were diametrically opposite. Nans went sharply up while Briffas went down. You see the uh, down part of the Briffa reconstruction in the graphic above. Disguising this inconsistency between the two reconstructions rather than explaining it has led to much of the strange history in this field. The Briffa reconstruction was based on densities from a very large network collected in the early 1990s by Fritz Schweingruber from 400 sites in northern Canada, Siberia, classed as temperature dependent. To this day, it remains by far the largest sample of this type. In these early articles of Briffa's, the decline was not hidden. For most analysts looking at a graph like this, the unavoidable question would be, if tree rings don't respond to late 20th century warming, how would we know that they didn't do the same thing in response to possible earlier warmth? A question that remains unanswered to this day. The famous Mann reconstruction was published in April 98, a month before Mann received his PhD. Mann also used a tree ring network of over 400 sites, but instead of only using temperature limited ones, man included precipitation limited sites from the US Southwest and notably Graybill's bristlecone pines, which climate rod audit readers know about, which had a pronounced 20th century growth pulse, which the author said was not due to temperature. And instead of using averages like Briffa, man used principal components or his own adaptation of the method that enhanced the contribution of bristlecone pines. What I show here is the first version of the Mann reconstruction, which is rather muddy and gives little hint of its later iconic status. Contact between Jones and Mann commenced around this time. The first climate gate letters are, between them are polite about the merits of paleoclimate proxies and how to attract attention to the field. The fortunes of Mann and Briffa in September 98 were very different. Despite his then very junior status, a few months from his PhD, Mann was appointed as one of only eight lead authors of the important chapter two of the third assessment report. On the other hand, Briffa, despite many years of experience, worried about looming unemployment at the start of the new year. A few months after his IPCC appointment, Mann submitted an extension of his reconstruction back to 1,000, including the first recognizable version of the famous hockey stick. It was published in February 1999. Fortuitous timing, since 1998, with its huge El Nino, had been exceptionally warm. Mann wasted no time in incorporating 98 temperatures into his graphic, and introduce the now familiar phrases that 1990s were the warmest decade of the millennium, with 1998 the warmest year so far. Co-author Hughes proclaimed the long-sought demise of the medieval warm period. The findings caused a sensation both in the scientific and popular press. Man's newfound prominence enabled him to escape the precarious life of a postdoc receiving a faculty position at the University of Virginia a couple of months later. In May 99, Briffa published the first assessment of Mann's results, containing what, to my knowledge, is the first spaghetti graph of reconstructions. In this graphic, there is a new ver Briffa version, the one in pale blue, which now, instead of going down at the end, coheres rather closely to the Mann reconstruction. In this graphic, for the first time, values after 1960 were deleted. In retrospect, this article represented the first bite of the poison apple of Hyde the Decline. It seems to originate in an effort to minimize the discrepancy between the Mann and Briffa reconstruction. Since Briffa, like Mann, believed that the 20th century had been anomalously warm. Briffa's assessment included a few sensible caveats about reconstruction, including the possible dependence of the man reconstruction on trees in the dry southwest US, the issue that McKittrick and I later just analyzed in greater detail. Prior to publication, Briffa had sent a copy of his short article to Mann for comment, 
Man is now an entirely different figure from the year before, making peremptory demands that Briffa would withdraw even slight criticism. Presaging later conduct, Man sent a demand to the editor of science, saying that it was better that nothing appear than something unacceptable to us. Man's supervisor, Raymond Bradley, immediately dissociated himself from these demands, which he described as amazingly arrogant. Man then tried to paper over the dispute with a non-apology to Jones and Briffa. Bradley's private comment, excuse me while I puke. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mann's section of the uh, draft third assessment report included a new spaghetti graph giving pride of place to his own reconstruction. It had an, yet another Briffa version, uh, the one with relatively little variation, uh, as shown it in orange on the right-hand version of this graphic for, uh, to, to show it, but it had the characteristic late 20th century decline and an unexceptional closing value. This spaghetti graph seems not to have been well received by senior IPCC figures at the lead authors meeting in Tanzania in September 99. In a post-mortem a few weeks later, coordinating lead author Folan wrote that although a proxy diagram was a clear favorite for the policymaker summary, the Briffa reconstruction, quote, dilutes the message rather significantly, adding that this was probably the most important issue to resolve in Chapter 2 at present. Mann wrote that everybody in the room agreed that the Briffa series was a potential distraction from the reasonably consensus viewpoint we'd like to present. Briffa recognized that there was pressure to present a nice, tidy story as regards apparent, apparent unprecedented warming in a thousand years, but expressed many caveats, in particular that the proxies were not responding the way they were supposed to, and that the recent warmth was probably matched a thousand years ago. Man worried that skeptics would have a field day if the Briffa reconstruction were shown, as this might undermine, quote, faith in the paleo estimates. Mann was convinced that doubt was not scientifically justified and didn't want to give fodder to the skeptics. Matters settled down rather quickly with Briffa apologizing to Mann for his temporary pangs of conscience. A couple of weeks later, Briffa sent Mann a revised reconstruction, one with uh, more low frequency variation, um, the one shown on left. The red part is what was later deleted. Um, in the graphic at right, I show what, what, the ver what it would have looked like had this been uh, included, and the decline would have been quite visible. Mann sent in the first uh, reviewer draft a few weeks later and had a very different appearance. It used what Jones later called Mike's nature trick. Well, climate scientists later described the trick as, quote, sophisticated, its main element was very coarse. Adverse data was simply deleted. <laughs> a second element was a little more subtle. Any smooth series required forward values to calculate the smooth. It appears that man substituted instrumental data for actual data after 1960 to calculate the smooth and then truncated the smooth in 1960. This used instrumental data to pull up the end value of the smooth Briffa series, further disguising the decline. The truncation was not reported by IPCC and is obviously not readily recognized in the tangle of spaghetti strands. The trick email came two weeks later uh, and has been widely publicized. Jones did not entirely understand Mike's nature trick as used in the IPCC report. Rather than truncating the smooth Briffa series, as Mann had done, Jones spliced the instrumental record onto the proxy record, a method that Mann later condemned at real climate. Not referring to this usage, Mann asserting that, quote, no researchers in this field have ever, to our knowledge, grafted the thermometer record onto any reconstruction, saying that this, quote, specious claim usually originated from industry funded climate disinformation websites, like uh, the WMO, I guess. 